When we look at trigonometry, or triangles, of any kind, so right angle or not, it helps to know how to do the area of a triangle. So I'm going to start by just uh, first actually drawing you just any old random triangle. So I'm going to try to give you that here. So let's just draw any shaped triangle here. It doesn't really matter how it looks. I'll just make it maybe like this. This is good enough. Now if I label this triangle, I can label it, uh, maybe this is angle A, this is angle B, this is angle C, and therefore this is side A, because that's opposite to that one, this is side B, and this is side C. And we always label them with lowercase. If this is the case, then how do I find the area of it? Uh, we actually have an equation for it. So we have that the area of any triangle, remember this works for right angle or not, the area of any triangle is actually pretty cool. It's just um, one half AB sine C. This is all there is to it. It's just one half times A times B times sine C. In other words, what you need to know, you need to know what A is, you need to know what B is, and you need to know this angle C. In other words, you need what we call a side angle side. If you know a side and an angle and a side, then you can find the area of that triangle. And you might think, hold on, no, I remember learning areas of a triangle. It's always half times a base times a height, right? But that's only for a right angle triangle. This works for any triangles. So what I'm going to do is just show you really briefly then what happens if I did make it a right angle triangle. So maybe I'll do that. So what if, so what if, uh, let's say this angle right here, C, is equal to 90 degrees? Then, I mean, my new triangle then would look like this, wouldn't it? Like this, like this, like this. This here would be C. And this right here, this would be capital C. This right here would still be A, this would be B. Then how would I do this? Well, look at this equation, and we would then say, fine, the area is going to be, maybe I'll do it in red here. That means the area then would still be 1 half times A times B times a sine of 90. And if you're not sure what the sine of 90 is, you can always do it on your calculator. Make sure you're in degree mode, which I am. I can take sine of 90. Or you can always draw it if you know how to draw these, but I get one. So because of that then, this whole thing right here becomes a one. And that means it's just half times A times B. In other words, this looks just like one half times a base times a height, doesn't it? What you've probably learned a long time ago when you learned about the area of a right angle triangle is half times a base times a height. This would be the base, this would be the height. And this is the same equation. That's what's beautiful about this is that this equation right here works for any triangle, right angle or not. That's why I like this one right here. This is the greatest one because it works if it's a right angle and you just put in 90 degrees and away you go and you still get the same thing. But it works if it's not a right angle triangle and that's the healthy part or that's the helpful part. So we can do this example here where we want to find the area of this triangle here. So let's try that. So we have a triangle and we have a side and an angle and a side. So we have SAS. So we can do this. And that means that we know that the area it's always a good idea to always write down your equation you're going to use. This helps you to keep track of things, and if you have a teacher or someone doing a test, it helps them to see what you're doing. So half A times B times sine of C. And it doesn't matter which one I call A and B in this case. So I can just say, fine, that's 1 half 11 times 13 times the sine of angle 42. And I'll just do that on my calculator. So I'm going to start with sine of 42. Maybe that's easier to do. So I'll say sine of 42, enter. Okay, I get that answer. Multiply that by 13. Multiply that by 11. I'm going to take that answer and divide it by 2, because that's what the 1 half does. And I get 47.8. So that's my answer. My area is approximately 47.8. you got to think of your units. Now it's going to be things squared. You look at the units here. You had units of A, which was centimeters, and you had these are here, which are centimeters. And sine doesn't have a unit. So you got centimeters times centimeters, so it's going to be centimeters squared. Or you can just know that area is always in units squared. Right? There you go. That's how we can deal with area.